After a poor start to the season, we needed to make some tweaks to our formation. So I've decided that attack is the best form of defense as our wingbacks push forward, our wingers cut inside, and Pablo Martinez pushes forward to provide support. And somehow it worked against Wren as Belic scored a screamer and Marta scored his first of the season as we beat our opponents 2-1. It didn't quite have the same effect against PSG. Despite conceding an early goal at home against Toulouse, two second half goals from Stefan Mitrovic, both assisted by Anan, gave us all three points on the day. But we really got into our stride against Marseille, keeping our first clean sheet of the season in a huge 3-0 win over the league giants, with Aziz Yakubu adding a brace to his goal tally this season. We then got key players Jose Marsa and Etienne Green signed up to new five-year contracts. This motivated the team to reach new heights as Aziz Yakubu scored his second hat-trick of the season, putting him on 10 goals already as we thrashed Angers 4-0 away from home. So as Yakubu wins player of the month, the league's top scorer has guided us to fifth place after eight games, heading into today's derby against Lyon. So why do we seem to be doing so well? Well, looking at this general performance graph in the data hub, it just looks like we're having way more shots than everyone else. And as a result, it's leading to more goals. We're not doing anything special in other areas. In fact, our pass completion ratio is slightly below the average. We are pretty much bang average when it comes to tackles win ratio. Shots on target were only slightly above average. But just the sheer number of shots is resulting in a lot of goals. When I was looking to tweak our formation, I was looking at my assistant manager's report and I was trying to work out what we actually are good at, to be fair. And basically, we are just very good in terms of pace. Although now I'm looking on this, uh, the pace thing isn't there anymore. It was there before, but there's... We are very fast, I promise you. It also said good dribbling, but again, that doesn't seem to be on this, this list anymore, which is a bit strange. It also said we weren't very good at heading, but again, that's now not, oh, there it is, not good at heading. We're not very good at that. So really what we need to do is run fast, dribble the ball, make short passes so we're not mistaking our first touch and put low crosses into the area because we've got short players. And that is basically what we're doing. We are running at the defense, putting some low crosses in. We're short passing into space to get the ball forward at a high tempo. And we're pushing up the pitch as much as possible as well to try and defend as high up the pitch as possible. Estevez has got 15 pace, Vallejo's got 13, Mars has got 14 pace, and Fontan's got 13 pace. To be fair, we're playing in a league where actually there's probably not as much pace as there is in the Premier League or the La Liga, so we can get away with playing a high line with some defenders who aren't quite as pacey. But so far, it does seem to be working. So first up, we've got the derby against Leon. They're currently in 10th place in the table, although I think they have gone up to 9th as this game has just kicked off because they've gained an extra point because the, the score is nil-nil right now. But they are having a an average start to the season. We've not yet beaten them in this series, so it'd be lovely to get one above our rivals right now. Of course, in real life, are looking like they may end up being relegated, which is just mental considering the size of the club, the quality of players they've got. But they are rooted in that relegation zone right now in France, and uh, they are looking like they may be in trouble in-game and in real life. Aziz Yakubu, good movement there from him to get in behind the defense. His shot, though, was just over the bar. We have a throw-in, though, with Gonzalo Estevez, who uh, gets it back after he gives it into Pablo Martinez, finds Martinez again, who puts it onto Koba on the edge of the area, who is forced backwards under pressure from, uh, from not RB Leipzig. I don't know where RB Leipzig came from then. <laughs> Leon is who I'm meant to be talking about. Estevez finds Pablo Martinez in the middle. It's been cleared once again, but Belic finds Koba the pressure on the edge of the area is pretty big as Lopez makes a decent save from a, I think it was a half cross, half shot there from Fontan. Lopez gets the game back underway though. The highlight is continuing and it's headed forwards by Leon, but we do regain possession at the back with Gonzalo Estevez, gives it to Jesus Vallejo. And surely now we are going to build ourselves on an attack. This highlight is long enough that it should mean there's going to be a goal at the end of it. And hopefully it'll be for us as Mitrovic, who's been really good at the start of this new season, finds Pablo Martinez, who puts it over Lopez, who came out to meet. He got caught in no man's land, was lobbed, and we are taking the lead here. So now we just need to hold on and make sure we get the win, as I think Gonzalo Estevez has been sent off there for a, I think it was a two-footed challenge. Sent off, yet two feet, it's at the commentary at the bottom. That scuppers everything. I suppose what we should probably do is drag these players back here to be wingers on support, bring Mitrovic back as well to be a, a inverted winger on support. And I guess 
we have to sacrifice someone to come on at defence. And that may have to be Pablo Martinez. As we move Belic over, Koba comes back down a little bit. And then we bring Akim on at right back and we just make you full back defend, full back defend. We should probably also drop the tempo. Waste time, don't run over the fence anymore. Be more disciplined, probably. Probably hold some lower lines here as well. Go into a low block and just kind of hope for the best. Maybe even a cautious mentality, but that just might be a little bit too defensive. And, you know, when they get free kicks like this, set pieces, we're not going to be able to defend from properly as <sighs> Leon come close. It's a long time to defend a lead with 10 men, but... I think we've got the players to do it. We've made the changes, but if we just make little mistakes like that, this is where Leon are going to punish us as they've got so many men forward, but luckily the shot from distance is well wide. We just need to get to half time, get to half time, reassess there, hope for the best. And we can score a goal on a break somehow. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? It's Vallejo, fine. In fact, what we could do as well, actually, is change a few in transition tactics i didn't do that actually so that's probably something we should look to do in a second we'll see how this highlight comes out first but i realize now that i've thought about changing transition tactics we're going to concede a goal or not aziz yakubu doubles our lead despite being down to 10 men so yes uh in transition let's regroup and hold our shape and slow the pace down so half time 2-0 uh, it's a good position to be in fact i'm thinking tactically all the time right now what we should maybe do is actually hold a higher defensive line to keep ourselves even more compact maybe we've got some new tactics and clearly a new tactician here i don't think i've ever been this active in changing tactics in a football manager game before i dare say this is an absolute masterclass of how to protect a lead when you are in the position that we're in right now a man down within 30 minutes of a game starting not only were we winning already we are now winning by even my, my word this is going to my head and i won't be able to walk through a door soon uh, leon please don't score because that would be rather frustrating luckily they didn't i think we should make some changes though just to bring some fresh legs on at the back and i think we'll bring koulibaly on for marsa mitrovic looking quite tired let's bring ahmed on and belic not playing brilliantly so what i might do is bring arnie mayer on i think he's an experienced head that we might need in this situation just call me jose Mourinho because i am so good at this game if we come away with this Winners with a clean sheet. We've been at 10 men for 67 minutes. It could be one of my greatest ever football manager achievements. This says Arnie Mayer has got a free kick. If we score a third here, my word, I don't know what I'd do. Oh my word, it's just over the bar. I mean, of course, I am going to be very cross with Estevez. He's made our life much more difficult here, but he has enabled us to just set up how we want to set up and protect the lead like this. I mean, I just... It's almost, I almost don't want to be cross with him, but I will be cross with him because keeping 11 men on the pitch is much more advantageous. Everyone else has had to work so much harder at this stage. And to be fair, it might be getting to us a little bit at the end of this game as Leon looked to come forward. There's only so much our players can take. The fitness levels are, are dropping quite quickly. And my word, we've somehow not conceded. So coming away from today's game with a clean sheet is absolutely remarkable. What a result, up to fourth in the table as things stand, nice work. We will fine him half a week's wages as per the, whatever the thing is called, the the naughty boy list thing at the start of the season. I always get my assistant manager to do it for me. And now we've got international break for two weeks, which gives us a good chance to have a look at how some of our lone players are getting on out and about. If we sorted by team, actually, we've got two players at Red Star. Alexis Rodriguez, a 17-year-old four-star potential striker slash winger on the left-hand side. And Marius, the sensor we bought in, I think last January, he's got four stars of potential too. They're both playing at Red Star FC in the third division, where they are currently only 12th. Not ideal for them there, to be fair, particularly as our other affiliate club, Lapoy, are in third. But 6.75 and a 6.8 rating, two goals for Alexis, although they both came in this first game. He's not scored since that first game. is a little bit frustrating, actually. But Alexis does seem to be developing quite nicely. Marius seems to be flatlining a bit. Sissoko, we don't care about. He's 29. I've tried to sell him so many times and no one ever buys him. So he's out on loan at Redes this season. Aman, though, is doing very well at Bastia. Now, he agreed playing time regular starter is getting regular starter playing time. I don't know why he's only played four games compared to like the six of Rodriguez and the nine of Sankara, for example. 
Uh, Bastia currently top of the third division who have played seven games. So he's missed out on three of them at least. Would like him to play more. He's got a goal and a 7.12 average rating. So he's clearly doing enough and is progressing as you can see here. Sankara is actually going downhill. He's only got one goal in nine appearances for VAFC in the second division. Both him and Bastian playing for the same club in the second division. And I'm starting to think that Sankara could be a barrier to them getting promoted because they are currently fourth in the league right now in those playoff places but if Sankara is starting every single game and isn't scoring that's an issue he's only got you know 18 months or so left on his contract now fundamentally should be good if he gets his composure up that finishing that pace the passing the technique it should all get him goals but at 21 years old he's kind of running out of time to develop and then Bastian is looking pretty good a lot of you guys in the comment section have told me this guy's amazing and you can see he's improving quite significantly here. Next season, I'm expecting him to be in our first team. And if he can have a great season with VAFC, finishing in the playoffs or even better promoted, it shows that he's a very solid, reliable defender. As for our second team that play in the fourth division, they are currently actually ninth in their division as things stand, which isn't too bad. Particularly given we are playing a lot of 16 and 17 year olds, it's kind of a bedding in team for the youngsters with the five star potential. Like our keeper has literally just turned 16 years old, so he's only just been able to start playing for the second team, made his first appearance and got a clean sheets. I mean, the oldest player in this team is 20 years old, and I think that's probably the youngest player in a lot of other teams. I mean, right down here, uh, Arthur and Mamadi, they're both 15 years old. They can't actually play yet. We've got to wait for them to turn 16 years old to actually be able to play in this league. So maybe they should be in the under-19s, but this team is just full of rejects really that I don't care about. None of them have got significant potential so they'll all be gone at some point. But the future is looking bright at this team and that's what I'm excited about. I think particularly because we're in France we aren't going to get the same amount of money as you do in England, in Spain, in Italy or in Germany so we are going to have to develop young players and put more emphasis on that. Although we may be waiting a few years for some of our regens to actually make it into our first team. Also Gianluca Busio getting a goal on international break. Annoyingly when I have played him he's got some poor ratings which is why we're sticking with Pablo Martinez right now but I, I know he can get great ratings we have to give him more chances oh this is not good Etienne Green out for seven days to two weeks you know there's a part of me that wants to give our 16 year old keeper the reins actually however we have to think about the bigger picture and I suppose our backup keeper is probably more sensible although saying that you know distribution we're rolling it out short and passing it short that doesn't really matter too much the low speed of our youngster does concern me but I'm sure that will improve. You know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to start the 16 year old in goal. Let's see what happens. Esteva's also got to come off obviously because he is suspended but the rest of the team will keep as it is and you can see from the match sharpness already you know I've got my favourite players and the players that <laughs> don't quite play so much but we are playing against a team in 16th place in the table. They've won one game all season you know and we have done very well at not losing games really. So I think we should be okay, I think. Although he does look quite small in the goal. I've never actually looked at what his height is. Maybe we should look at that in a second. He does look kind of short, actually, which is a little bit concerning as he makes a fantastic save. What a player. I oh, know, comparing him now to that defenders and people around him, he doesn't look quite so small. So maybe he's okay. I just, you know... I realise I could have made a, a big error in putting a 16-year-old in goal to play in the top division in France when our second keeper is, is, is better. Oh, I don't know what I want about. He's 198 centimetres. Maybe what we need to do is, is get him on corners. I mean, look at him. He's, he's got the highest match rating in our squad, which is great for him, but not so good for us because it's now almost half time and we have not done anything in this game. This team are in the relegation zone as it stands right now and we're looking for European football this season. This is a game that we have to be winning comfortably and if we don't there are concerns basically maybe what we need to do is get a man sent off because that seems to work so well against Leon but as uh, Anan gets the ball in the penalty area he puts it across to of course Azizia Kubu for his 12th of the season let's show everyone the recent praise is justified put on a show out there I am surprised at how well Aziz Yakubu is doing actually because when we we're looking at strikers there wasn't a great pool of players to choose from to me he seemed like the best of an okay-ish bunch like there was no one there that I thought was going to tear the league apart 
To me, I was thinking he's just a slight improvement on Brea Moreno, who wasn't that great for us last season. But he's now scored more goals than Brea Moreno did in the entirety of last season, and we are barely out of the first few games of the season, as, oh my, where we hit the post from that free kick. What we should do, actually, is maybe make a few changes right now. Belich not playing well, so let's bring Tommy Doyle on. Also, Pablo Martinez is playing well, so Koba comes off and Busio comes on. Fontan playing poorly and also a bit tired, so Vaclav comes on. They're the three changes that we'll make. And we might bring Ahmed on for Mitrovic shortly. Ahmed off the bench this season has been really good as we concede a goal. That wasn't Arno's fault in goal. He was relying on the defender to get it cleared, and the defender did absolutely nothing. So first of all, the cross isn't blocked. And then, I mean, who is that there? Who is that? It's the substitute right back who's playing today because Estevez is suspended. That's the reason we're not winning today is because Estevez was sent off last game. So with 10 minutes to go, we need a goal here to give us all three points as Busio finds Ahmed on this near side into Pablo Martinez who finds Anan. Anan puts it in the back of a net. Thank you. Although apparently it is going to go to VAR here, which is concerning. Please don't do that, lads. Okay, now we just need to hold on for the last five minutes of the game. Hopefully score another one to help out with our goal difference just a little bit. And we will be picking up all three points as Jesus Vallejo gives the ball back to Arno. Matthew Arno. I think he's had a good game on a 6.8 right now. Really should have had a clean sheet. But obviously you can see there, uh, Zadaka on a 6 rating there. He was at fault for their goal. That's why he's on a 6 rating. So really, he's the reason that Arno's not got man of the match ratings right now. He should have kept a clean sheet today. But you know what? If we go on to win the game, it doesn't matter. Just know that Zadaka uh, is not going to play many more games this season. In the meantime, Busio, who's come on the pitch and has played OK in a 6.7 rating. I think he needs a bit more game time right from the start as we may have just won a penalty. I don't think that really was a penalty. But if it was, I'll just do this quickly. Penalties. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Gianluca Busio, you're on it. This would feel pretty harsh if it was given to us. And, oh, well... I wanted Busio to score. Either way, it doesn't matter because we've won the game just 2-1. It also moves us up to third in the table, ahead of Nantes, who I think lost to PSG in the early kickoff. And it actually puts us a point behind PSG, as my assistant manager is comparing Anand to Lionel Messi. But he is now suspended for a match for reaching uh, three yellow cards in his last 10 games. Also, Belich has now picked up an ankle ligament injury. He's out for two weeks, but that will give Tommy Doyle or Arnie Mayer a little bit of a run in the team. Because I've changed the roles around in the CDM spot a little bit, it was a deep line playmaker. It's now a ball winning midfielder. It has kind of changed things a little bit because I had brought in Doyle to be a deep line playmaker in that centre defensive midfielder spot. I mean, he can do it. It's just that his marking and tackling is a little bit low. And Arnie Mayer's not all that much better, really. So let's get Tommy Doyle on and Hugo on as well on the right-hand side. He's made a few substitute appearances, but nothing special. Not that we're expecting much from him in the first place. He's kind of come in just out of necessity. But Estevez will start this game. He's back on the pitch. And now we're taking on Lille at home. Lille, uh, a decent side. I don't think they've had a great start to the new season, but, you know, historically they have been better than us and they're showing why right now, 90 seconds in the game. To be fair, it was always going to be difficult for Arno to keep clean sheets on the grounds that he's obviously 16, not that great of a keeper yet, and we haven't actually kept many clean sheets at all this season, but I was expecting to win this game and now four minutes in, we're 2-0 down. And I don't want to have to say it, but I, I think Arno was at fault for... My <laughs> mm. highlight straight from kickoff though, we have to get a goal back very, very quickly. Otherwise, this game can get away from us oh so quickly as uh, Pablo Martinez gets in the penalty area and gets one back immediately. Three goals inside of five minutes. Leon currently the twelfth place as they are winning right now. I'm going to go more attacking actually to start off with um, because I feel like we need to push forward actually in this game and just get on the front foot because I think it would have been a shock to concede the goals like we did as 
the keeper makes a really good save there to deny Yakubu through a packed penalty area. Let's just encourage the team a little bit. Hopefully that just gets their momentum going. Obviously, to get the goal back was crucial. We're only one goal down now. But we may need to give them a bollocking at half-time because uh, the clock ticks down. We are now at half-time and we're 2-1 down. So, thrash the arms. What was that? Get your act together. Everyone looks motivated. But if we don't score by 55 minutes, uh, I think what we need to do is make some changes. Mitrovic on a 6.2. Doyle on a 6.4. Fontana on a 6.5. There's a few... Estevez, if you've been sent off again... Well, we have to be more gung-ho here. So Doyle's going to come off and Akim comes on. Then we're going to bring Ahmed on for Mitrovic. Koba's done not much. Let's bring uh, Busio on as well. And I feel like we have to leave Yakubu on because he scored so many goals, but I'm tempted to bring Brayan on. Also, Fontan on a yellow card as well and playing poorly. Just get you off of Aklav. Demand more from the team. We have to go. I mean, I suppose we're overdue a loss. We've won five in a row now. We can't win every single game. But this one feels quite painful, to be fair. The nature in which we conceded those early goals was frustrating. Another red card as well has not helped us out in the slightest. Particularly because it's way easier to win a game when you're already winning it and going down to 10 men. Now, now it's impossible. Fortunately, Etienne Green will be back for the next match as we put that one over the bar. I, I, I don't want to blame Arno, but he is on a 6.1 rating right now and... and you know, definitely that second goal he was at fault for. You know, maybe the others he wasn't so much. Maybe, ah, oh, I don't want to blame him. He's only 16 years old. He's my new favourite player in the team. He's got five-star potential. You know, you, you can't you, you can't get on those players' backs. Maybe it was too early. Maybe we should have just put our normal second-choice keeper out instead. But, you know, you've got to take risks sometimes as Arno... Has a good kick. Well done, fella. Good kick. Uh, it was straight to a, a, a Leo player, but it's okay. You got the lines cleared, and that's exactly what we needed you to do. Good. I, I, if they'd scored, then I would have been really upset. So this one, maybe we just kind of need to see it out and just get to the end of the game and focus on our, our next fixture instead. This one's a write-off. Estevez, I can't believe he's been sent off again. First game back after a straight red card, he does the exact same thing again. What's wrong with him? Like, genuinely, what's wrong with him? He must have some sort of issue if that's what he wants to be doing right. Because surely, you know, you do something stupid and you look at yourself in the mirror after the game is like, yeah, I, I messed up. I did something bad. I am never going to make that mistake again. I am not going to dive in with two feet again. And what does he do? Literally, the very next game he plays, dives in with two feet. Someone who does take his chances very well, there is Ahmed. Third goal of the season, third goal off the bench. And maybe this is going to lead to a comeback. I'm going to shout encourage. If we can get a draw out of this game, that would just be incredible. Oh, bless him on a 5.9 rating. He doesn't deserve that. I don't think he's been that bad. I think we'll have a little chat with him after the game. <laughs> he drops to a 5.8. I don't know what he's doing to keep going down, bless him, but... The match is finally over. We've lost it 4-2. Sometimes the results don't go your way, but I'm proud of your performance regardless. And, uh, you know, Arno is not happy with that, bless him. I mean, that whole team talk was for him, actually, really. Esther is now banned for two matches for having two straight red cards. And we will find him. In fact, I'm going to find him two weeks wages. Confirm that. As for Arno, discuss. Um, Criticised last game, but I'm going to put my arm around him just so he knows that I'm being friendly. To be fair, I wanted to say, like, don't worry about it, lad, but these are all quite bad, actually. In fact, I don't think this is really going to do much at all, but maybe just make you made too many mistakes. I'm sure as a goalkeeper, know your mistakes are costly. And actually, that seems to have worked. I agree, I'm disappointed. I'll do my best to improve. Great having this chat with me. You know, sometimes I am a good man manager. Anyway, it's time to get you out of this team and we are going to be putting, uh, obviously, Etienne Green back in the sticks for the next game. But Arno has bounced back. He's just played in the second team against Monaco's second team and kept a clean sheet. Anyway, after all the weekend's fixtures are done, we stay in third place. Our next game is against Nantes in fourth. They just beat Toulouse and, of course, they never lost to PSG 3-0, didn't they? PSG go four points ahead of us and Nice are six points ahead. Man City's youth setup is the best in the world. The top 10 is on here. I don't know why it's in such a small box. It seems very confusing, uh, but I don't think we're going to be in this list. I mean, Renar, they've developed a few decent players, to be fair. They've got Camavinga and three others. 
Matthias Tell did not know he came from Rennes, to be fair. That, that's quite impressive, actually. Although has done nothing at Bayern Munich so far. Anyway, we're not on this list, which is, is a real shame, but one day we will be. Hopefully because we're stealing lots of young players from other clubs. Of course, one way to get better youth players and stuff is increasing our junior coaching budget and asking the board if we can also networking improve youth recruitment. I mean, they're already very, very good, but it'd be nice to max these out. Although the board aren't saying nothing about it to me in the, in the news items. So, you know, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. All I know is that Gonzalo Estevez is off the pitch again. Arnie May's picked up an injury, so he's off the bench. Uh, but we can bring Belich back on the bench and we can also bring Anan back on the pitch as well. So, heading into this game, we are away from home. It's a bit of a local-ish rivalry. I don't think Nantes is too far away from uh, St. Etienne. So, ideally, we want to be getting the win here. But crucially, if we do get the winning against a team that is also battling for a top five place, it suggests we are where we should be rather than having a, a lucky start to the season and we'll drop down later on in the season. So, this win is very important to us as Marcel goes back to Etienne Green, back from his injury after missing two games. I don't think we would have won the last game if he was still playing in goal. I think we still would have conceded those shots and we still would have lost our game. I'm not going to blame Arno, despite his 5.8 rating. Mitrovic, though, has now got as many goals as he got last season total with his fourth of the season. A much improved season from him. He just seems to have more about himself already. I guess it took him a year to get settled at the club and adjust to French football. And now that he's had that year adjustment, he can now start to really push on. I would have liked it had he been there right from the start doing the goals and everything. But, you know, it maybe just takes some players a little bit longer. I don't think he even got an assist in the league last season. I mean, I don't really know what he was doing most of the year. To, have, to be playing on the left wing as an inside forward for quite a lot of the season and get four goals and zero assists. Like, what were he doing? And I think we have to say it was a good first half. Keep it up. If we can get ourselves a second goal here on the 60-minute mark, that would really... Seal the... Look, Mitrovic, assist. I swear he got no assist last season. That's definitely at least one now. Yep, last season, four goals, zero assists. But this season, three goals, now four goals and two assists. Tell you who's not playing well though today. Azizia Kubu, he's gone a little bit quiet, hasn't he? I think we bring Brian Moreno on. And I also think we give Vaclav more of a run out. And Nan on a yellow card, Hugo on your come. And Busio is going to come on for Doyle. And I want to give Koulibaly some more game time so he comes on for Marsa. Slightly risky with five subs all at the same time, but I'm sure it won't backfire. Koulibaly is an interesting one. I think he's got high potential. I think he's a very good player, but we need him playing more football. But when Vallejo and Marsa are so good, it's difficult to get him into the team. He's also got Bastian coming in next season who will start ahead of him because I prefer Bastian, if I'm honest with you. I feel like he's one of our youngsters. I feel like Koulibaly has been brought in as backup. Could be good. He's not actually very good as a ball-playing defender. I don't think his like, technique and passing is particularly good as Koba gets his first of the season, his first goal as a full-time St. Etienne player. That rounds off a superb victory. And that brings us to a 3-0 victory away from home. I think we really do have some credentials for top five this season. It gives us a three-point buffer to Nantes and Marseille, and of course a five-point buffer now to Rennes, and then we are miles ahead of Monaco and Lyon. Sadly though, the board are not improving our youth recruitment but they have accepted the junior coaching. Well, let's talk to the board and say, can we do youth recruitment, please? I'm going to suggest that we should improve it. And they're going to say, it's already good enough. I'm going to convince you to do it. And they say, yes, we will do it. So if we now don't have at least 10 five-star players on our next youth intake, I'm going to be very cross. So off camera, I'm going to play Trois in ninth, Monaco eighth, Lorient in 12th, Lens in 13th, Nice who are top of the table and Auxerre in 11th. And then we'll come back in January for Reims and the January transfer window. And then take on Rennes in sixth, PSG in second, Toulouse in 16th and potentially Marseille in fifth. We're in the groove this season. Things are going very, very well. I just hope we can stay as good as we are.